hashtag for us for our campaign with the confidence rising. I told WDF don't switch good times are coming on E50 diving. Fan cams, reactions, watch along to the pride of London thriving. The Eagles of South they flying. Keep your eyes on us, we ain't hiding. Good evening all, good evening. Um, how are your nerves? Ah, boy. We've, we've gone from, um, ah, we should be all right. To, uh, yeah, it's a bit squeaky bum time at the minute with this. Uh, this is a match reaction. Uh, it did finish Palace to Manchester City 4. And within the space of, I'd say, three hours, we've gone from, that was an absolutely fantastic performance to, oh my God, lose another one. JC, how are you? <laughs> I mean, I'm okay. It's I, I don't know, man. I don't I don't think this season's going very well at all. And you know, Luton. They, 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 unfortunately, they're not going down without a fight. <laughs> and to be fair, if there's if there's anyone in this league that's looking like they'll pull out a dodgy result or a good win here or there. It's going to be them, isn't it? And it's just because they tried a little bit harder than everyone else. But, you know, we have to look at ourselves, man. We should have beaten them. Should have beaten yeah. um, Forest as well. Probably should have beaten um, Brentford. We had loads of chances to get points and be safe, but we just haven't taken our chances not clinical in front of goal and you know granted we've got players coming back now but you know we've got to try and I, I wouldn't say that this Liverpool game is a game where we have to get points because I don't think it is but the, the later you leave it the more pressure's on you and you don't, and you want to get it over and done with as soon as possible really Dan how are you? Yeah, I'm all good. Um, just also been watching, just keeping up to date with the football today. Um, uh, what, what, what did I watch? I watched, uh, well, Ch Ch Chelsea drew to Sheffield United. You know, I think, honestly, I'm going to give props to Sheffield United. I actually think they're doing pretty well recently. I don't think, I think they're too far into it to get themselves out of it. But some of the teams around us have to play them. And I'm more, I'm more confident that they might not necessarily get three points against Sheffield United now than I was, say, four months ago mm. um well so uh, Jay, congratulations to peterborough united I, I had a little watch of that just to see what ronnie edwards was saying uh they won the efl trophy so congrats to them uh but yeah besides that i've been trying to just not think about palace today to be honest with you um yeah for the very reason that you said about about uh luton town <laughs> it is crazy and i mean we're probably not the only club thinking that there's obviously forest brentford everton all thinking the same thing and I think with Everton they could potentially have another points deduction coming up uh, four, four is being rumoured but we'll see um, just a quickly big shout out to Dilbo Gunnar sorry JC I don't know how to your job but I just wanted to make sure I shouted out this particular person guys go and give him a, a sub um, there's some great stuff obviously and um, listen a result today went in their favour so also officially top of the league um, I'll leave JC to the rest of the comments in a bit Right, now, granted I was out um, at a uh, church event, so that's why I wasn't at Celeste Park. Um, I was watching the game up until uh, the 60th, 60th, 70th minute. But I have caught up on that, um, and not just the highlights. And the first thing I want to say is, once again, we cannot be putting this on Glasgow. We went toe to toe with the current world champions, the rated European champions, and the reigning Premier League titles. Now, it sounds mad that we did it, <laughs> but especially that first half, we did not disgrace ourselves at all. And it could easily have been 2 2 or 3 or 3 3, you know, because both teams had chances. So let, let's break down that first half to start off with. Four minutes in, I 
Adam Wharton. That was, off his, that was off his right foot as well. So. <laughs> yeah. What a pass. And you know what? JP, I, I know he's one on one, but that's not easy to do. It's not because he's not like he's in the middle of the goal where he can pick both sides. And he's not also in, let's say, the left hand side where he can whip it like to the far post. He's on the right hand side where he means he's going to have to strike it across the goalkeeper. And the accuracy of what the finish was incredible. You know, um, a, a very, very good finish. Uh, Dan, big yeah. up to you as well, because you, you've you said it numerous times now. Listen, you've written him off. But how good how good is he currently right in this Glasma system? Mateo, you know what? Yeah. <clears throat> and like I said in the fan cams, I, I was so, so confident that he was absolute rubbish that I, I, I said that I would shave my beard off. That's how confident I was. Yeah. I'm not so confident I, anymore because I'm just... I just saw that to... player rating. First and foremost, you had a mad pause moment and then you sent shots at Nicky. <laughs> not really, weren't really well, shots, to be fair. More, 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 more thank you, Nicky, to be honest. So I didn't have to shave my beard off. Well, the thing is, is if he does if he does his next... Um, if he does another Prem review before the end of the season, then Dan's just to shave it, no? So, Nicky, get on that. Right, yeah, but, yeah, but, even the, yeah, but the baller has to, of the week has to be like deserved. You can't just give yeah, him yeah, baller yeah, of the week. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Deserved, deserved. Yeah, yeah, deserved. It has to be deserved. Yeah. It has to be deserved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Deserved. But yeah, no, I thought I, 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 I thought he was excellent against City. Like, he was surrounded by players. Like, City's counter press is phenomenal. And he dealt with that really well at times. Man, he was sometimes he's surrounded by three or four players. Man, just somehow pop a pass out to. To whoever was around him, and I thought he played it really well. Like I said, I said before that um, Glasno is really good with centre forwards. Like uh, at Wolfsburg, he had Vuk Veghorst, who we've all seen play football, and he's not that great. But I think he got he got about 15, 20 goals a season out of him at one point. Um, and then same with Kolo Mwani as well. Uh, I think he got about twenty five goals in in one Bundesliga season. <laughs> so he's clearly very good at doing it. Um, it's to, really slow to load. Ah, oh, finally it's come up. Uh, so yeah, so right now Mateta's got uh, what is it? One, two, he's got five goals and one assist in his last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight games, which is is incredible, really. And they've not been against like e- necessarily easy teams either, I would say. Like, he's scored against Brian, he got out of curiosity because I because I remember I made a little bet yeah. as well. He's on seven and Eddie's on six, right? No, uh, Eddie's on seven as well. They should both be on seven Prem goals. Oh, you know what? This hasn't updated. Uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so I think that, so sorry, I it's think... Five, it's, sorry, apologies. Five, five goals and one assist in nine, nine games. So he's on seven for the Premier League season, which is the same as Eddie. And actually, yeah. now another good fact for you, if, if they both get to double figures this season, it'll be the first time we've got two strikers on, on double figures since 04-05. So, uh, yeah, not nice they, bit of a. But they have um, both. They've both got uh, double figures GA, haven't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, first quite, time yeah, that's yeah. happened in a while as well. So, yeah. Considering how ropey the season's been, <laughs> seven not Prem goals. Much. Yeah. And I think yeah. going back to Mateta as well, I think like he, he suits that system. Like he, he he's clearly upped his uh, ball holding game. Uh, he's much, he's a much better target man now than than what he was before, and I think I think that's what we want. Did I, did I say a pause or something? Mm, yeah. You know, I, yo, I did. I haven't even. I, I don't. Even, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I have to read. Watch how it works. <laughs> you know, it's bad. me and JC just smirked exactly the same time. <laughs> What did he say? <laughs> oh man. Um look, the, there's nothing we could do with the Brainers finish, by the way. Um I just think maybe a bit on the build up, I think Woody overcommitted to try and support Nunez. I, I think he might have had a better job if he allowed Grealish to try and cross it across the box. Instead of because where he overcommitted, Grealish did, did, did that reverse pass, which totally sold um Wharton by the way. 
because he was literally half a second too slow. But the strike from De Bruyne was dumb. Like <laughs> no one saving that. Yeah. No one saving that. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. He he had a great game, and then you look into the second half. We still got issues of starting slow. Um, I think Anderson. I don't know if it's positioning because he seems like he stretched for it, and it kind of guided it into Rico Lewis's feet. But then why are there like three City players just converged? <laughs> You know, it, which would have been mm. disappointing. The thing um, is, is when when the goal actually went in, when I zoomed in to Guardiola, he's going, "No, why are there three there?" <laughs> you could see mm. he was actually upset that there was so many people so close to each other. Yeah, and I think that's also because he knew the threat we were on the break as well. You know, and I'm oh, sorry. Before that, how did we not get a penalty? Wow. I think I mean, we can all draw our own conclusions I've, on that I've, one. I've watched it back, and I can take two things away from it. The first thing is that the second his hands go over Eze's shoulders, granted, already then it's a foul, but even before Eze jumps, he his legs just sort of disappear underneath him. And also, he's got a reputation now, so... Yeah, I got in the repetition. But the thing is, it's it not is even like he won. The, he, it's not even like he won the header. He just ran into him. Like, it's a penalty. I guarantee, yeah. if it was a opposite other way round, and it was the Bruyne, it's the Bruyne on Anderson. It's a penalty for yeah, Man City. It's a penalty, you know, which is it's it's, it's annoying. Um, so I, I just personally think it was a penalty, and it, we may have gone two one up. Just quickly, and I say, I keep referring to this because I know Glasgow is getting some stick from some of the fan base, not all. But our decision making in the final third is really ticking me off. Jordan, are you? <laughs> <laughs> right, he's done well to rob Rodri of the ball. We've now got a 3v1. Okay, people can say, oh, he hit the cross, but he's unlucky. Pass the ball! <laughs> Because it was um, Mateta and Ebbs, you know. Even before that, Walton, and he, you saw his reaction, he put his hands on his head immediately because he had Ebbs to the left and he had Ayu and Mateta to the right. And the thing is, is that behind Ebbs. the Ebbs pass was the right pass. It was just, just the, the execution, execution wasn't there. Yeah. And he literally went like this. Oh, See, that one I can forgive. But Jordan, you're not even in form. Pass the ball, you know. I, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not saying that we would have gone two one up and one. I'm not saying that, but we know how we are. We have to be clinical in order to try and win games because we know that one goal is not enough for us. You know, I, I, I just hope that we can just get that right going forward because we overall we're doing so much right. We, we made we. I'm not going to say outplayed. That's a stupid way to say it. But we matched City in certain areas, like I said, especially in that first half. I don't think we were out of place. Well, a, perf- a performance like that would beat most teams in the Premier League. Yeah, I, I, I believe that. I think, every, I think a, t- a performance like that would beat most teams outside of the top six. But it's just that we don't perform like that week in, week out. That's the problem. Mm, absolutely. Let, let's go into some comments because then we need to have a proper discussion. I think you lot know who I'm preferring to. Chairman says, big up, at least Forrest lost. Big up, Tim. He says, big up, guys, nervy. But feeling surprisingly positive. I think it's because I believe in Glasner. Seems he's up for the fight. Cause, well, the thing is, he said that I'm, I'm coming here to win. And generally, in that first half, I believe that the team, that the players also believe they could win as well. Even, yeah. even, when, they, even when we conceded, we were still fighting. Like, we were still going for it. Uh, Big up Del Boy Gunner TV. Rich has already shouted you out. Uh, Loso here says, Time to sell Eze. I'm sure we're going to be talking about Eze That's a little bit later. <laughs> uh, exactly right, Rich. Uh, he, was pu- he was pushing the team to keep going and to get higher, but players stayed in their shell during the second half of the City Blitz. Uh, big up the dog. Big up yourself. He was talking to the morning and says, the Legs can't disappear. If you watch Eze, <laughs> they do in the box. <laughs> um, 
Uh, Tim here says, question, do you think Eze's reputation is hurting him? Rest more reluctant to make calls for him because of his rep. We had the same issue with Will. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, well, was with Will... Well, with Saha's ones, they were fouls. The thing yeah. is with Wilf is he actually got fouled all the time and it just never got given. Here, I'm sure Palace fans unanimously can say, we, we can tell Eze's diving. But with Wilf, I will stand on this hill. Show me a clip of him diving. Seriously. I, I, I haven't found one. And he still hasn't gotten the most penalties in the Premier League. Um, that, that just surprises me. Mm. But the thing is, I think we can all agree that Eze does get fouled, and he does get proper penalties sometimes. But, my God, does he play for it. And even when it is a dive, it's so theatrical that you just think, oh, something's going on there. He hasn't even got a clip. He's just making the most of it. Uh, Jeremy here says, oh, he's been terrible last month. Lucky to still be selected. Uh, I reckon he'll get selected in the Liverpool game, and I reckon Elise will start against, is it Newcastle or West Ham first after Liverpool? Can't remember. Yeah, but I reckon that'll be Elise's. Um, Sunday I think, 14th. I think that'll be Elise's first start. Uh, cue the olden vibes again. Uh, best away day, boys. Love Mal. Where is your obsession with Malcolm? You're saying <laughs> about Malcolm every day. Uh, Crystal Palace need to win a game. Yes, we <laughs> well, do. It's a kid to you lot. <laughs> yeah, that, that'd be nice. Well. <laughs> Well, what, what I nearly said, but it's not watershed, is no Sherlock, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. We need to have a discussion, lads. Now, this discussion is not saying that Ebbs is he's, he's not a good player. He's a great player. He's a good player. He needs Michael Elisi back, clearly. But for the first time, I was like, well done, Glasnow. You took him off. Like, it was literally a bold decision. I immediately went onto Twitter to see if people... Because you know Twitter did reaction. How can you take off him for slap Or something like that. But I don't think many people were mad that he came off yesterday. You know, and fair play shot. He did his... He played his part. Can, I, his can, I, can I say yeah. that when he went off and Schlupp came on, I did... We didn't miss him, if that made sense. Like, it felt mm. like the team was still playing as it was even without him. If anything, it was actually a little bit more direct down that left side. We've stuck on Yeah, because <laughs> I've been seeing a lot of these memes like, Ebb's passable. Like, no, I'm going to do a loop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, punching taught me this turn. Let me do it. <laughs> we, we, we have to have this conversation about Ebb's because we were worried about him in this system. And we're not sure if it's the case because Mitchell doesn't offer much of an outlet out wide. Now, there's, there could be factors. But within his own game, he's holding on to the ball too long. Um, he lacks an extra turn and whatnot. And to Tim's point, that's exactly what I was going to say. At least they came off for 10 minutes. And the speed of play that we were playing at was mad. And I, I think we created like two or three chances. Or even half he, chances he, he in created, those ten minutes. He created. He, I think he. I think he got two big chances created in his ten minutes of being on the pitch. I don't think Eze had. I think Eze had one, and he played sixty minutes. You know, so it's just about, and I, I keep going on about this this decision making in the final third, and um, because there's even one where Ebbs had it down the left hand side, and for some reason City's defense went like that. You've got Mateta there. If he bounces like does an outside of the boot pass, Mateta's in. You know, and it's just we saw that work. Wharton did it, just get the ball behind City's back line quicker. We just wasn't doing it. What? I've seen a lot of people say sell Epps. Now, listen, granted, we're gonna lose one, two, maybe three of our, our better players this, this summer. Mm -hmm. Let's just hypothetically say he, say he doesn't get sold this summer. What needs to happen for him to thrive in this system? And I'm going to sort of open this up to, to everyone and get involved in the chat as well. What? So what? What? What does Ebbs need to do to to succeed? Or what's going to be needed? Yeah. Um. It's, 
I think it's his decision. I, honestly, I, I think his problem is decision making. I don't think it's a system because he's played as a sole 10 before without Elise and there's been similar issues. Um, I think, and you know what, for me, is very reminiscent, I think, of when we had when Zaha used to go on like bad runs of form where he would just hold on to the ball too long. Like, I, I do genuinely just believe it's just he, I mean, there is the element of, I suppose, he has. There, there has been people suggesting maybe he's not entirely fit or whatever. I think, I think, I, I do think it's mainly just his decision making. Because, like, like JC said, like if he just takes that pass and just pass outside the boot quicker, then you know he's potentially got an assist. Um, it's just little things like it's taking extra touches here and there. I think he's just overdoing it a little bit. There's absolutely no doubt of his technical ability because I mean he's been poor for for let's say a couple months, but he still had like, he still got like I think. He still scored. He still got an assist. So his yeah. technical ability is still definitely there. Um, I do think it's just his decision making. Just it slows up the play again, similar to how like Zaha used to be. Just like mm-hmm. taking on too many players, taking a few too many touches, thinking mm-hmm. that he had to do everything himself. Mm-hmm. And again, maybe that's why that's why I've always said like if, if Elise is there, that takes the pressure off him. It's not, not even necessarily like a physical pressure of like. He's actually got to do all the creation, but also the mental pressure as well. I think. Yeah, yeah I, I do um, think it is all mental. Yeah, hundred percent. Because, like I said, like his technical ability is undoubted, and I think the issues still came when he was at Sol Ten, where apparently that's meant to be his best position. I think he's fine in the system. It is just a mental thing. I think. Um, for me, in terms of selling, my honest opinion would be that I would have sold him anyway, regardless of how he's playing. Because if I'm not being funny, he's well not being funny, but like he's almost 26, which I know he's an old by any stretch of the imagination. He's the oldest of all the players that we would probably look to sell, minus maybe Anderson, but I don't think we would look to sell Anderson. Like he's the oldest of all of them. He's going to be 26 in June, so that I think that's like the prime time to get the best amount of money for him possible and he's on a big contract as well now and he's yeah exactly and he's on a big contract he's got he's got a release cause i don't know how much that is no, no, none of us really know how much that is um and if if city do want him for say like between 60 to 80 million i think i think that's a great deal and you got at the end of the day we, we bought him for what like 18 million pounds something like yeah. that I think and, and I know, with a 10 percent sell-on clause yes yeah, so a 10 percent sell-on i don't so 10, remember so let's say a fifteen percent sell-on clause, just for worst case scenario, on on the profit that we make. Let's say we do sell him for the lower end of sixty mil. We make what's that? Forty-two million. Fifteen percent of that is about uh, what? About six, six, seven million. So we've effectively made like thirty-five million pound profit off someone who, from now on, I'm not going to say he's going to get worse, but the chance, the chance of him improving, His price tag goes down. Yeah, exactly. And if we want to be in that situation where, like, for example, like a, a Brighton or a Brentford or someone like that, we're gonna we we have to we have to uh, we have to suck up like being able to like lose these players in order to then re. If you think about it, if we made that thirty five million profit, we can then go out and buy a decent a decent striker, or we you know we can go out and buy someone like John Rowe, or we, and 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 someone else on top of that. So. I would have done it anyway, to be honest. Yeah, I think um, for me, it's definitely a, a mental thing when it comes to Eze. Like, I think what I, I don't know if it gets on you guys' nerves as well, but for example, if the ball breaks and you know we're we're trying to kick the ball out and the ball falls to Eze, he'll start dribbling towards our own goal before then trying to pass it to someone to turn away. Perhaps just hack it away. Seriously, Elise does it. Everyone else does it. He's the only one that takes a touch, looks up, tries to dribble around someone in our own box. And you're thinking, man, he's just asking for trouble doing that. And also, I think that Dan said it a few weeks ago, he tries to do everything on his own. And I think one part of the game that really sticks out to me, I think I think Ebbs, was, Ebbs pulled out wide to get the ball. He got the ball out wide, and I think four City players pounced on him. But instead of just trying to pass it back to Mitchell or lift it over the pitch or just kick it forwards, I think he tried to do like a, a spin to try and run through someone, lost the ball right in front of Glasner, and he got taken off two minutes later. And 
after he lost the ball, Glasner was fuming with him. So I reckon that it is all mental. Like as Dan said, he's an incredible player. And to be fair, if the release clause is sixty million, I would take sixty million if I'm honest. Because as you said, you can get replacements because forward areas of, of young players luckily it's, it's, we're not short of, of players to look for really and it, look in a championship you could go John Rowe Philogene maybe, uh, Jordan James you can look at three players instantly that can fill in, in that position so you know I, I would sell Eze but not because as Dan said not because he's playing badly but he is the oldest one mm. Um, just quickly before we go back to the comments, because I've seen lots of interaction regarding his influence. It's also, amazing. question to you guys. If you were Man City, at this moment in time, would you pick Paqueta over Eze? Paqueta is their number one choice, one million you, percent. You, you would pick and Paqueta over Eze I, right now, wouldn't you? I, I put my hands up. Yeah. I'm going to say this now. Not that I didn't rate Paqueta, I just thought he was overhyped. But actually watching him play, especially when Brazil played England in that friendly oh my gosh i was like no maybe it's just west ham because he was balling out <laughs> you know um so yeah i think um assuming that they're the same price to be honest i'll probably go um i'll probably go pakatar as well only the best Brazilians come through flamengo's academy yeah, there we go. Here we go. There we go. yeah it's all about yeah. brazil okay. i love that yeah, love that. Yeah, not even for, for kind of footballing reasons, just kind of Brazil. Jeez, no, I think I don't know. Like I could see, I could see, because the thing is, I think, like I said, I think the thing that lets down Ebbs is 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 the mental. Like I need to do it all myself. In a Man City squad, perhaps he doesn't get that. You know, because let's be real, like he's a quality player, but he still won't be the best player in the team. So maybe that maybe that element of his game would would help him. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think the thing I would say though is that they are slightly different. So I think Ebbs is better down the middle, but I think Paquetá's better, sort of drifting more to the side. So yeah, he is versatile, to be fair. Yeah, I, I uh, think Ebbs is better going down the middle though. Yeah, and and also, how long does it take? Pep to get Jack Grealish to play in his way. It took ages, and it's going to be the and it's going to, it's going to be the exact same. Yeah, no, but it's going to be the exact same thing if Ebbs went to Man City, isn't it? He's going to have to. He's going to have to accustom to it for a whole year before he's even playing regularly, and even then, he'll probably still be only on the bench. But you know, let, let, let's let's do some more comments. There's, there's quite a lot of interaction here. Uh, big up Tim. Again, he says, uh, when Elisa came on, we played a lot faster, which is great to see. Big up Pat. Big up Rich T. <laughs> Dan, the guy keeps getting get Pepsi Max. Pepsi Co, a float of business and the goat. Warren was cold and Lerma has been, ha, should be shake, shaking when Decore comes back. I don't know, we'll you know. In a minute. <laughs> I don't know, you know. I've, I've got a hot take. I've got a hot take. Uh, Ebbs will improve when Elise gets back, 100%. Uh, He needs to bring back the Nike headband. (laughs) (laughs) I I think if Macron did one, then Macron, (laughs) they they might allow it. I don't, I don't, I don't think the Macron hairband has the same kind of clout. The 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 Macron one would just be an elastic band. (laughs) (laughs) It'd just be a hairband, but he's wrapped it around his his forehead. Oh man, was that what? Is that uh, there must be a reason why uh, when when Alan Saint Maximan came from Nice to Newcastle, there must have been a reason why he couldn't wear the Gucci headband anymore, right? It must have been. Yeah, it, there's yeah. definitely um, rules regarding um, advertising. Uh, add goals to his reputation. He actually might make up his mind with passes. Uh, don't you think Ebbs is playing as if he was the only one to get us carrying forwards? Glasner's system is two to three progressive passes in the final third and Eze doesn't play that way. No, he'd rather dribble. I don't think I don't think the the, the, the passing versus dribbling's the actual issue. I think it's the fact mm. that he just slows down the play in general. Yeah. I think if he if he if he dribbled forward and drove, I don't think there's any issue whatsoever. Yeah. And if he just quicker if he just made quicker decisions, 
I don't think we're having this conversation. Mm. If he's uh, listen, if he's more direct, we're not having this conversation, are we? Yes. We're saying, oh, we lost the ball, but he was trying to go forward. Yeah. Like we're not. And, uh, and on that, like I don't think anyone's like say we, like we don't want him to go. Like I'm, we're just saying hypothetically, if one of wants to go, I'd rather him than Elise go. Like just hypothetically speaking. Mm-hmm. But it's just frustration at this moment in time because I, I know there's a lot of burden on Ebbs at the moment and I'm glad that Michael's back. But it's just yeah. like, just do things a bit quicker for us. It will help. Yeah, Loso here saying time. So Eze is 25. He's getting to the age now. He doesn't suit Glasgow's system. Need a, sm- a player more like Smith Rowe for around 40 to 50 million. We ain't buying no one for that kind of price. We're going to buy someone that's yeah. young and coming up and then we can get profit rather than buying someone who's already here. I think Lozo was saying that if we get 40, 50 million for Epps, then use that. Mm-hmm. As well. Yeah, but we're not going to blow all our money that we've just made on someone else, really. Uh, Jackie here basically saying that she doesn't think Epps is fit and maybe has a lack of belief or lack of confidence. Yeah. There's definitely uh, a mental side for Jackie. I agree with Dan. Most fans act like Eze is a god. Uh, all that makes the most sense. Epps is a great character, a very likable member of the squad. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, this is crazy. They all walked off the pitch at four minutes. Yeah, mad. Uh, I hope Luton and Forest lose games. Question: Do you think Me too. Me too. Do you think Franca can still slot into this team alongside Elise if we manage to keep him in the summer? I don't yeah, know. I, do you think Franca is going to be ready next season? Thing is, he's had. I think the injuries at the moment haven't been great because I feel like I he would have got a lot more minutes. I think he would have got some minutes yeah. the last few games had he not uh, been injured. He is someone that's so direct, you know. So he, you can see him fitting. I don't think he'll start, but I think Gladstone's at a stage with him, especially he can chuck him in every, like with thirty minutes to go every game and then just build up his minutes. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the unfortunate yeah, thing is, is, is if minutes, yeah, the unfortunate thing is, is if Glasner was our manager at the start of the season, most likely because Elise is injured, France will be starting every game, and Jez will just start as well. Mm. I think I don't think so. Jez, Jez got Jez had a few too many oh. injuries, but I think France, if he had the injuries he did have, I think he would have been either starting or playing most games. Yeah. This point, just on the side, Hamada came on and he looked, he looked better than he had. He looked really good in midfield, but you know, yeah. but you can tell already that yeah. Glasner rather to play France as the first substitute over Amma. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Jack here saying, please tell us who you'd, who you'd buy to replace Ebbs. Uh, my, 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 honestly, my go to right now would be John Rowe. I think he, like, when I watched it back, I thought he, I thought he was quality. He's so, I, I, he's so direct in that forward place. Yeah, right? and and he's so he's really versatile as well because like Norwich play uh, four two three one and he's played all across that three, so he can play left, right, and centre. So there's no mm. issue of like he's better on the left or right side. I didn't realize how str- he, I didn't realize how strong he is on the ball as well. Yeah, he's 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 definitely the most direct of of the wingers in the or that kind of player in the championship. I think you end up at Villa, though. <laughs> Sorry. Just personal. Um, J- Jaden Philogene, I think, for me. Philogene, I think Philogene's good. I think John Rowe's good. I do like um, J- Jordan James as well. I think maybe, a, a, I think maybe even a, a left field shout could be. Um, Jack Clark, because he's gotten he he hasn't really been getting much hype lately. He's had he's had a little bit of a dip in form, mm. and for me, a possible outside shout is another Sunderland player, and I'm not saying because of his brother, but some <laughs> of the goals that he's scoring in the championship is crazy, and he it's plays Joe in the pen. Joe Bellingham. I think he, 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 he I think he'll he, he'll be in the Premier League either next year or the year after. The, the thing is, with attacking players, there's there's a lot more options than there are defensively defensive players, and we're yeah. actually going to speak on Lerma in a minute. I think I think if you're looking at a team that's sort of hovering in the championship that has really good talent, is Hull City. Yeah, because Philadelphia, Carvalho, still, still Dreams, for, um... 
they're still pushing for what you call it um, playoffs, aren't they? Yeah, I think, I think they're like tenth at the moment because uh, F- F- Villa Jean's got that really weird clause that if they get promoted, Villa could buy him back for fifteen mil. Yeah, apparently his um, attitudes dipped though. I don't know if it's kind of like all the rumors and stuff. He's definitely gotten. I think his head's been um, swayed a little bit by mm. interest from the Premier League. <clears throat> Jefferson Lerma. Now, we, we've all been saying, listen, we can't wait for Decore and Wharton to play midfield. Listen, we can't wait for Decore. This is why I hope we stay up so bad. Because if we do go down, we are screwed. <laughs> but getting checked back, um, getting checked back with Wharton. Mark may potentially go. We, we might have to accept that. He could potentially go. But I've been very impressed with how Lerbert's slotted in this right, uh, centre-back. By the way. Very impressed. Uh, do you think Lerbert himself actually now saves us a bit of money where we could have been looking at buying two centre-backs and we may only need one? My, my opinion on it is I think... I think we should still get the same amount of defenders. I think the reason why I say that is because I do, whilst I do think he's done very well there, in my opinion, we should keep it for like, if we've got injuries, he can play there. Or if we've got injuries in midfield, he can play there. Mm. Um, or if or if we need to rotate, because I, I think, I think we're so used to like having absolutely no depth whatsoever in our squad. That we just forget that we can actually be like, oh, hang on, Lerma can actually just cover two different roles. Yeah. Um, that's 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 what that's what I would do. Um, personally, I, I think I think still bring in if Mark does go, some a replacement plus plus another one. Um, but I think having Lerma there is excellent for either if we got injuries, which let's be honest, we probably will do. Uh, and or we're playing multiple games in a week. So, like, in a couple of weeks' time when we have to play West Ham and Newcastle, for example, it would be great to be just to be able to rotate players, um, especially with Glasner's style as well. If we want to play that intense, um, I think having depth on the bench will be really important. Yeah, I, I agree. I think he he's a better midfielder. Than a than a centre back, and I think we we have to remember how good he actually has been this season, just in the middle of the park, and he's only had two games at centre back. Granted, he can do a job, but I would still, uh, even if Mark stayed, I would still buy another centre back anyway because of new formation we play. We have we need more centre backs anyway. Like we, in reality, we can't be playing Joel Ward every week at centre back now. Like he was already. He was already like on borrowed time at fullback, and now he's sort of gone into centre back now. But you'd still rather see a proper centre back there, let's say. So I'd still say you either need one, maybe two centre backs, even if Mark stays. But if he goes, and you're going to need two or three, maybe. And I think Lerma's great because if we do have injuries, he can still cover there if he needs to. And that, that I would I would still keep him as a rotation option on the bench because if you've got so, for example, right now, it's Hughes and Wharton, and then the next two people on the bench is Ammer and Gyro, isn't it? But then, if you go from oh, that, we had Gyro. but then, but then, if you go from that, then you say in the midfield we start with Wharton and Decore, and then you can bring on Lerma. Mm. Then we're thinking because after time. after after last week when I had a proper look through Bournemouth squad. And I realise that they literally have two first teams. I think that's something we need to strive for. Because if we've got on the bench Lerma and Hughes, let's say, it's not a great midfield, but it's still a midfield that can play in the Premier League, let's say. It's not championship level. So we need to have more players all around the pitch, really. And yeah, I think keeping Lerma as a midfielder and then having someone of that quality actually being on the bench as well is going to be a massive uplift, like if we're chasing the game late on because he's got loads of energy, he can jump really high. You know, he's just got a lot of good attributes which can be used by Crystal Palace, if I'm honest. 
Yeah, and, and think... just, you're right, guys, about that squad depth. It, it's needed because our injury record has been dreadful this year. It has been so bad. To be I fair, we always have bad played. injuries, apart from Vieira's year. But in Vieira's year, we didn't train. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got like what seven, seven major injuries, I believe. All like seven players out. So we, we, six, we've six, had six, we had three injury crisis in one season so far. So. Yeah. So. <clears throat> All right, let's do this play with oh, well, It's just me in it, and then um, we'll open up the lines. It's just you. Right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this really quickly then. Um, Henderson this had a that, good game. This is the whole eleven here, so we can just fly fly through this. All right, sweet. Henderson had a good game. Shame he's conceded a four, but I'll give him a ooh, so six or seven. I'll give him a seven. He did keep us into the game quite a bit. Munoz, also, I have to say that that save that he tipped onto the bar was incredible. And also yeah. Rodri's scuff shot as well. Yeah. He must have seen that so late. Yeah, very good saves there. Munoz, this is the first game I thought he, he had difficulty. You know, Grealish had a, a really good game. Um, five. Four for Woody. He struggled. I mean, I'm contemplating putting a three there, by the way. Um... I'm gonna put a rest. Yeah, I'll put um, Anderson five, Lerma six, um, what you call it? Oh, Tyreek struggling. Nothing. This wing back position. He's, he had. A, he started off quite well, and they just faded. Uh, I liked him, but he's he's finding this position hard. Because now he's got to focus on both both sides of the game. Uh, but he wasn't as bad as Wardy. Give him a five. I think it's because he knows he's got no help with Eze when going mm. back either. No, this is it. Hughes, uh, give him a five as well. He, he the last two games he's he's been better. To be fair to him, um, Wharton was brilliant. Um, I'm gonna give him a seven. Yeah, I can't really do eight it's for anyone, really. I mean, we played well, but I wouldn't say well enough to go that high. Uh, who we at now? Ebbs. Gosh. Four. Oh, and I can have a three. <laughs> Just, just kind of decision making. It peed me right off. Um, he's not been himself lately either. So JP, yeah, seven as well. And now to, the, now to really the bench. Well. Also five subs as well. Ah yes, yes. Um, Schlapp, I'll give a six. I think he. Injected some energy down the left hand side, got himself an assist. Any five, what he can go. I won't lie, Michael could he, oh, six or seven. He was only over 10 minutes, but he was so. I'll give him a six only because of the amount of time he was on the pitch. But my goodness me, he injected so much pace. Uh, and the rest, I'm going to give a flat fives because he went on for as long as he has. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Tim here says, "Question: How how many youth will fill out the squad next season?" Jez, and David, Ume. and David. I think there will be the only three. I don't think I think Ume will be alone. Oh yeah, that could happen too. Yeah. I mean, then again, I think Ozo could do with a loan as well. You know? I was going to say that. I think I think Ozo could go go with a loan. To be honest, I yeah, feel like he's doing well in it. Loan, yeah, I think he'd do really well. And same thing with Jez. Yeah, did, think, we we messed up Jez's year bad. It I, I, it was it was Roy. It wasn't it wasn't we. It was Roy. We <laughs> wanted to keep him. What me? <laughs> as a well, as a club, I mean, like 
Yes. As much as Roy wanted to keep him, surely, like, Parrish has got to say no. If you're, if you're not going to use him, send him on loan. It's that simple. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's the only thing. Right. Links in, guys, if you want to come in and have your say on the game yesterday or any other Palace related topic, feel free to do so. One one thing I did uh, I did want to want to show, just because I know people are panicking about relegation, I just want to show people the uh, the league table this time last year, roughly. So this was a league table, roughly this. Well, I say this time last year. I mean, like in terms of games. So I know people are saying that we're the new Leicester. Well, Leicester are already in a relegation zone at this point. Um, teams that were five points above, West Ham were five points above, similar amount of games. Dan, do you want to zoom in a bit so we can see it? Oh, can you not see it, my bad? Yeah. There you go. Is that bad? Yeah. Big up, Tim. Hey, guys. So, yeah. So, because I'm, I only, I'm only doing this because I saw some people saying about Leicester. Um, Leeds were obviously the ones that went down. They were only one point above the relegation zone. Leicester went down. They were already in the relegation zone at this point. I guess we're kind of like the West Ham this time. Not really expected to go down. Five games left and five points above. So five games left, five points above the relegation zone. Don't think it's. I don't think the situation we're in is as bad as maybe some people think, especially when they're comparing uh, last year. But that, that's all I just wanted to show. I guess the counter argument is that we've got to win games. You know, at that time we started what we had was it eight games? No, ten games on the red, didn't we? Yeah. Between eight and ten games. And we won we won like seven of them, didn't we? I six think it was or seven six. of them. I think it was yeah. six, Rich. With a couple of draws. So that's the difference. We we've, we've got to start winning games. And to be fair, the running we had were all the teams around us. Probably. Whereas now it's <laughs> we had that run with the teams around us. We didn't get many points, and now we got some of the teams above us. So, mm. yeah. Tim, talk to us. How was yesterday? I'm surprisingly positive about it. Um, I, it's always disappointing to lose matches, but I, and this may be just the nature of my job, is that you know when you are investing, the only thing you can control is your process. You, you can look like a genius and have a horrible process if the market's good. Like, and you can, if you get married to results, you're going to end up at some point, you're going to screw yourself. That's just how that this game works. I don't think football is all that different. The process is what matters. And I have to say, Rich, when I look at that last 20 minutes, and the speed with which we can play when Elise comes on, irrespective of whether Ebbs is in the side or not, that is a dangerous side that I do think has the capacity to win games against Fulham, Wolves, West Ham. I'm not saying we're going to go to Liverpool and, and get a result or a win. I am saying you probably need two wins to secure safety. That team, to me, looks like it's improving enough under Glasner, playing with enough intensity and enough purpose with a system, I think, can get results. And the man is, he's up for the fight. He's got a process. And I think one of the reflections of the fact that he he does have something, at least for from his perspective, figured out, is when Ebbs is not playing to what he wants to do, off you come. I think he's going to try to figure out how to make Ebbs work in this in this system. I, I'm not a let's sell Ebbs now guy. I don't. I, that feels like a stark overreaction. I do think during the summer, he's he's probably one of the candidates that makes the most sense to sell. But that's different from. He doesn't fit. Get him out. Uh, that's not where I'm. Where I'm at. But I, I thought this was a good performance that reflects Glasner 
has ideas he's implementing with the team looks like they're taking those ideas on board for the most part and at some point when that clicks i think we get results you guys will have to remind me i remember reading a stat that when glasner started at eintracht frankfurt his first eight matches he had one win or something like that yeah. it was a, he's just completely focused on process and then eventually the results started to come i don't see why that would be different here no absolutely i think it's just obviously just it was intense because six games to go or seven for us and i i just think that loot and win yesterday i know and everyone just went oh crap. i know scary <laughs> right right it's it's it, it is scary and i and this is one of the things please don't take this the wrong way like i love the fact that relegation is a is a part of world football i think that makes it brilliant and i think it makes it the best game in the world but there is something that i hate about relegation which is i don't want to root against luton i don't like i think they deserve to stay up so i'm watching that match and rooting against carlton morris getting a what is fundamentally a brilliant goal towards i mean that's I hate that I feel like that, like, because it sucks for us. That's the part that I hate about re the threat of relegation. It makes me root against good moments that otherwise are really brilliant football moments. Uh, I, I get it, Tim. But hey, we have to do it. <laughs> That's how it is. That's how it is, right? No, it's it is the game. To be it fair, is. you know what? I've, ne I've never actually considered that. I've never really considered that concept. I've, always, I've, always, I've never even thought about, oh, you know what? I actually enjoy seeing like that kind of thing. But oh, that's a good, yeah, good way of thinking of it, to be fair. I, I mean, it's that. just like I, I, I want to applaud because here's the thing. Like, I think Rob Edwards has done such an incredible job at Luton and just the way that that team has fought and how they give every ounce of energy – they're a fun watch. Like, I think if you are a football fan, Luton has been one of the, when I'm, because it's been a joyless season for Palace. So I've been getting more of my joy about football watching other teams. And they've been, they've been an incredible watch. So, but I mean, hey, if it's between us and them, sorry, off you go. Like, that's how it is. That's just the, the nature of it. But yeah, I feel it's disappointing the result and then the way the results went against us. Having said that, I don't I don't feel like we are really flirting with the bottom based on the way that we play. Our position in the table is flirting with the bottom, but the way that we're playing, I'm not so sure that is the case. No, nah, thanks. And the glass has come in and we've just been, we've been better. We've just been better. There are areas that need improvement. Yes, 100%. Um, I think we've scored first in six, five of the six games or six of the seven games that he's had, um, which is impressive in itself. Yeah. You know, um, I, I'm just really, now that Luton won this, I'm thinking that Luton draw that we had, I'm hoping that single point there. I hope that happens for the kids up in the backside. You know. Um, but no, I, I, I generally do think we've got to get through next week. If we can, if we can. Listen, I will take a. I know it's going to sound quite hypocritical. I will take a Ray Hodgson nil nil <laughs> against Liverpool just to get, <laughs> just just to keep us ticking. Could we, we? We're going to have to just keep ticking the points all. That's what we've got to start thinking. One point's better than no point. Yeah. Yeah. But those games, those two games against West Ham and Newcastle, I think those are the two games will do will tell us whether we'll stay up or not. Yeah. I think I think I think as well with our fixtures, like fortunately for us, we do have 
games that historically we we normally do well against, like Fulham. Uh, we normally we normally draw against them. Wolves we norm we more often than not we've beaten them. West Ham always for some reason we always do well against West Ham. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I think two points would be enough to see us. And because if you if we got two more points, that puts us seven points away from relegation, and that's not including whatever Everton get if they get deducted anymore as well. They're and going think, to Dan. They're going to get deducted. Oh, they are. Is that is that a thing? Well, I, I, don't, I don't. I don't know. I, I th- that's not confirmed. And I to finish your point. I can tell you why I believe that in in a second. But fin- finish your point. Sorry, man. Oh, sorry. Um, and I think to have four teams go above us, bearing in mind that they most of them play each other at least once. I think. I don't know. I just feel like the permutations are so crazy for that to happen that you know if we get a couple more points i think that would be it mm-hmm. yeah and also like luton granted the river give them all like they deserve all the credit in in, in if they've only won three games in that, eight that, 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 stop, stop 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 you went on this whole luton haven't won this amount of games and this and that other and stuff you are becoming a judge jinx you need to stop talking they won <laughs> JC, correct me if I'm wrong. Did he not say I don't see Luton winning X amount of games? Yeah, I've already know. won one. Stop, yeah, Dan. <laughs> Just stop talking. Stop, please. <laughs> Palace are going to lose to Liverpool next weekend. Well, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think one before Tim jumps in there, what he's what you said about Glasner only winning one. I think so. He won one game in his first eight. Fine, for man. um for Frankfurt, but he's already won one for us in his first six. But one thing I did think which was quite interesting is every game, so we've played six games for Glasner, taking out the mid season friendly thing. We played six games for Glasner and we've scored in five of them. Every single game that we've scored in, we scored first as well. And just looking at it, apart from the Bournemouth game, I think we actually played pretty well in every game. It's just a lapse of com- concentration late on. Yeah. So we are scoring with this formation. Glasner has made an improvement because just looking and back to chances, the game... Because, we yeah, looking looking back to literally the game, like two, like two games before Glasner came in, we got pumped 4-1 by Brighton. Yeah. I mean, when we were when we were at our worst during at the end of the Vieira run, we just weren't even getting we weren't even getting shots, let alone shots on target. Like this is this is a team now that is creating chances and not finishing them. There's a lack of maturity, lack of clinicality. There's things like that that can be improved that I am certain Glasner will improve. Because I'm already seeing things that are better. But another thing that we could say against, you know, Man City yesterday, still, again, you know, knock on whatever here, but no set piece concessions. We were leaking set piece goals like nobody's business. And we have been much, much better in in that area there's lots of areas where we've been much better but anyway on the everton point their losses when they reported them were much much higher than expected they're probably not going to get punished for the two seasons they've already been punished for so when they got the six point deduction that was for i believe it's the COVID season 21 22. so now this next panel will be 21 22 23. so then you would figure that the punishment would be centered on 23. And so the thought was, hey, they learned their lesson. Their financial losses should be much lower in 2022, 2023. So maybe they get away with no other points deductions. And then they put out their accounts on a Sunday night and the losses were like, whoa, wait a minute. Hold on. This is like 90 million pounds. I thought, you were better. Well, what's going on here? So the fact that it's that to me, and I could be wrong here, means that they're probably getting at least another two points. Probably not six points, 
maybe I think four points would maybe even be a little bit harsh, but the fact that those, the numbers were nowhere close to what I think the consensus was, Hey, maybe they've kind of, you know, they've been talking with the premier league's going to be a little bit better. No, they weren't. So that is probably not good for, for Everton. We'll see what happens with forest, but I mean, for us, it's in our own hands. Like we just have to win games, a couple of wins. And I think to, to the point Dan made, I think we'll be fine, but we just, and I think also for confidence going into the summer, like that's the thing that if you win a couple of games, particularly towards the end of the season, or you get, you know, you get a high profile win, like somebody was mentioning United's coming to man, United's coming to Selhurst park, you know, get one over on them again, which would be fun and funny. And I, I would enjoy that very much, but stuff like that, like you go into the summer with those kind of wins or honestly, Villa last match of the season, you know, Villa is still vying for champions league at that point. And you get them on the final game of the season on home ground. What a great way to go in the summer. It's just stuff like that. I, that's what I want to see. Need need to get the vibes up. Absolutely. All right, we'll, we'll go through the last few comments and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Oh, man. Sam, I'm just bad nervous. Uh, big up Rob says, even though all can say if we didn't embarrass ourselves yesterday, I can see the vision. Uh, he just cares a lot and wants the best for Palace. I think that's when we're talking about man like Tristan had his first time back at Sellers the other day. I think, uh, yes, I agree, he needs to be a bit more positive for maintaining what we've done. Uh, there's a lot of when Pat were having a conversation with Tristan. Uh, uh, have a much better team than Luton, but they have heart and spirit, defend with their lives, and they always score goals. Facts. Uh, how many minutes does Elise get against Liverpool? Same amount as in this game. If if I was a manager, you don't think he'd get at least a half? Uh, I wouldn't risk it. I'll, I'll give him half an hour. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the, the West Ham and Newcastle games. He's needed for those. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Colin here says uh, we can beat Liverpool. I mean, we can beat Man United. Absolutely shocking. We just got a. We just got a go at, at the teams. Simple as when we attack. Man, I can't read today, man. Rich, please. Oh, my eyes. <laughs> we can beat Man United. They're absolutely shocking. We just have to go at teams. Simple as when we attack teams. That's when we're dangerous. Um, just sitting back of teams don't give us our best performances. Uh, Glasgow has improved the mentality of players and our play. Now it's up to players to improve the execution of our play. Absolutely spot on there, Colin. Spot on. I generally, like I said, if we were able to take our chances and make better decisions in the final third, I think we would have won four of the six games. And then we're, we're not having this conversation about well, the clash of rules. Okay, some of the people have been having that conversation, but hey, uh, end of PV era, we weren't even getting to the final third. Yeah, shocking one. Yeah. Um, we just read the most of our home games. We have, yeah, there are, our home games are key. Yeah, four of the last yeah. six. Yeah. Four of the last and six. Where I forgot as well. Out as well, haven't they? Have they? Yeah, for the last few games. Hold up, look. Um, our West Ham home game is the same week they play by Leverkusen. So hopefully they do well in, in the away in the first leg. So they put all their eggs in, in the basket in the second leg. Mm. Good point. Because they're doing all right in the league as well, to be fair to them. Yeah. Um, that has to drink Coke. That is a punishment. I prefer it, to be honest. <laughs> Pepsi's cheaper. Opinion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pepsi's free. <laughs> My dad buys um, it for me. Guys, big up to you. Obviously, this week we'll be building up to Liverpool away. Um, I don't know how it's going to work. So we'll have preview will be back on Thursday, I believe. I don't think there's any interruptions this week. Um, I know there is European football as well. So 
that actually that might affect if we get uh, Liverpool playing Thursday, aren't they? Yeah, I have a look. Hmm. I think Europa League's back. So yeah. we'll either have it on Thursday without a Liverpool representative or we might have it on Friday with. We'll have to see. We'll see. Yeah, they are playing on um, on Thursday, 8 o'clock. Yeah. Obviously, tactic will be obviously still Wednesday this week. Yeah. Yeah. Normal time. Lovely, lovely. And yeah, I mean, I guess the only thing is we know our Saturday is going to be nice because we're not playing. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we get results in our favour and we can just go to Anfield. And um, I mean, they've conceded two against United. So, fingers crossed, we can try and nick something. Um, oh, we'll see. We'll have to wait and see. Guys, big up all of you. Uh, smash the like button on the way out, please. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Share this channel. All of that. And until next time, up the palace. Up the palace. Here he goes. Here he goes. Here he goes. Here he goes.